Story 1. Something in the Lake When I was a teenager, we used to spend the summers at my parents' cottage. Everyone in my family was a bit of a night owl but me, and I would get up first. Because of this, our golden retriever Buddy would come visit me first thing in the morning, because he knew I would be down to walk him. The cottages in the area were pretty spread apart, and this early in the morning there weren't too many people around, so I didn't bother to leash Buddy. He was pretty well behaved anyway. We crossed the street to the lake to walk along the rocky beach. A thick fog sat over the water, and it was difficult to see very far. Buddy liked to swim, but couldn't do it without a reason, so I went into the bushes to find a stick to throw for him. I tossed it into the water and he jumped in. The water was very calm this morning, and it was cute seeing Buddy paddle through it, making little ripples everywhere. It was pretty clean as well, being a rock beach rather than sand, and I climbed a nearby hill so that I could throw the stick even further for Buddy. The fog was already beginning to dissipate quickly as the sun was coming out. Buddy brought the stick back up onto the hill and I launched it into the water for him. I could barely even see where the stick landed it went so far. I just saw Buddy's little head bobbing up and down as he paddled out into the dark water. A moving shadow caught my eye about 25 meters away from where I thought the stick had landed. It looked like an amoeba or some sort of octopus in that it appeared to have several long appendages that were constantly moving. Maybe it was some collection of seaweed or some other debris on the floor of the lake. I looked back at Buddy, who had found the stick and was paddling back, and the shadow started to move towards him. My heart sank. It really did look like it was moving with purpose, but slowly, through the water. I ran down the hill, thinking I would try to meet Buddy halfway, but once I got to the bottom, I realized I really couldn't see anything through the fog. It was a lot thinner from an aerial view. I wasn't a very strong swimmer either, and Buddy could probably paddle just as fast as I could. I ran back up the hill so that I could see him at least. The shadow was even closer now. Its tendrils were flipping around, and at one point I swear I could see one of them surface. It looked like it had suction cups, and I wondered if this was some sort of freshwater squid after all. Buddy was almost to the shore when one of the tentacles wrapped around his tail. He yelped and dropped the stick and I ran down the hill again to try to help. For a brief moment, I lost sight of him and he was pulled under the water. But in five seconds he resurfaced and swam to shore. Some of the fur on his tail had been yanked out and he was freaking out and barking at the water, but I managed to get him inside and he didn't look like he had sustained any serious injuries. After that point, I kept him on a tight leash and didn't let him play in the water anymore. Story 2. The Cult The summer after high school, I went on a lot of long, soul-searching walks around my neighborhood at night. One of my favorite places to go was a school playground about a couple blocks from my house. I would sit on the swings there and rock back and forth and think about my life being the angsty teenager I was. I liked to kick the pebbles under my feet on each forward swing. So most of the time I was staring at the ground as I was doing this. But on one evening, at about 11 p.m., I noticed a light in the bushes. I knew the spot pretty well and where all the lights of the houses usually were, and this was different. Was it a firefly? No, too bright. It wasn't a flashlight either. It was flickering, and it was too weak. I noticed that behind it, there was a patch of darkness that seemed to block some of the light from houses behind. It was a person, and they were holding a candle. I couldn't really make out any features on them, but they were slowly coming towards me. I was beginning to feel uncomfortable, and stopped swinging. I heard a twig break on my left. I turned to see another candle flame in the bushes on the far side of the park. I stood up to see yet another person coming towards me. In fact, I noticed that all around me there were a number of candle flames, closing in on me slowly. No one was making a sound, but I could now see that they were all wearing the same brown robes. There were about 16 of them in total. I knew it was time to go, and I walked briskly out of the park between two of them. They didn't even seem to care. I had expected them to chase me. 
They did turn their heads to watch me, however, as I watched them from the street, and a thick fog descended as though they had summoned it to shroud them. I could no longer see into the park, and I turned and ran home. I'm not sure what I witnessed that night, but it did seem like some sort of sinister, supernatural gathering. Story 3. Reindeer. I was driving up north in late November a couple years ago. My son was with me in the passenger seat. We liked to go stargazing and up north there was a lot less light pollution. It had snowed a lot in the last 24 hours, but now it was above zero and that snow was fast becoming a vapor, creating a thick fog on these country roads. It was only 4pm, but of course it was quite dark out. There were tall pine trees on either side of the road, and it felt like we were driving through a beautiful tunnel that smelled good. But the scenery stopped being so pleasant the moment I hit a patch of ice that had not yet melted, and I spun out. Luckily, there wasn't much of a gutter, so the car didn't roll. But our car was now perpendicular on that country road, and we were staring into the dark forest in shock. I asked my son if he was okay, and he did the same to me. Neither of us had any injuries, but it still took us a moment to catch our breaths. I noticed that the car had shut itself off during the commotion. I thought that was incredibly odd, and when I tried to start it again, it wouldn't start. Dad. Look. My son whispered, pointing up through the front windshield. I didn't see what he was talking about at first, but upon closer inspection, I noticed a bunch of purple eyes in the trees, peering out at us through the fog. I'm not superstitious, but I locked the doors. We were off the road, so it was safe to stay in the car. Out of the fog emerged eight reindeer. I didn't know this at the time, but their eyes turned purple in the winter to see in the low light better. At the time, I thought they were possessed. They each took a different stance around the car, and one parked itself right beside my driver's side window, just staring at me. They were beautiful, but in hindsight it was still one of the freakiest moments of my life. When another car pulled up, they scattered away, and the stranger inside helped us get our car started again with jumper cables. Although I guess it wasn't really that scary. The image of those eyes coming out of the fog in the trees was something I'll never forget. Story 4. Indoor Fog When I was 14, I house-sitted for my parents while they were off on a cruise. I was never much of a partier, so most of that week was spent playing video games upstairs in my bedroom. And one night I was doing just that. I had been putting off eating because I was kind of addicted to the game, and by the time 5pm rolled around and it was already dark out, I realized I hadn't left my room or eaten anything that day. I was starving, and I made my way to the kitchen. But before I could even get to the main floor, I stopped at the top of the stairs. There was a thick fog rolling through the main floor of the house. I had never seen anything like that before, or even knew that that was possible. The house was silent and I carefully proceeded down the steps and into the fog about four steps up, waist height. I waded through the fog as I made my way to the kitchen, opened up the fridge, slapped an old pizza box down on the counter, and began microwaving a couple slices. The fog just reached the counter, but didn't pass over it. As the microwave buzzed away, I searched for the source of the fog, and found that the back door was open. I thought that was odd as I hadn't been out back that day, but I was a stupid cocky kid and I didn't even think to call 911. I closed the door and locked it behind me, and as I went back up to the kitchen, I heard a strange clicking sound coming from the den behind me. I couldn't see anything, but looking through the fog it looked as though it was bubbling or something was moving under it. My heart sank in my chest and I backed up. The clicking sound seemed to pursue me, and I abandoned the kitchen and retreated up the stairs. The clicking had followed me, as had the movement under the fog, which now waited for me at the bottom of the stairs. This was the point at which I thought I should call 911, but like an idiot I had left my phone in the kitchen. Maybe it was some sort of raccoon or something from outside. But what was that strange clicking noise? It didn't sound like any animal I'd ever heard before. I waited at the top of the stairs, and after some time, the clicking and the movement moved back into the living room. I was starving and decided to make a break for it. 
I ran down the stairs, opened the microwave, grabbed my hot plate with pizza, and ran back up the stairs. The clicking pursued me hotly, but I managed to get out. Like the greasy need I was, I forgot my phone again, and didn't really pay it much mind after that. I went back to my room and forgot about the whole ordeal. The next afternoon, I awoke to see strange prints on the main floor of the house. Not from any animal I'd seen before, and they seemed to vanish at the top of the basement stairs. As far as I know, that animal is still in my house. Wish me luck. Hey guys, thanks for listening to that video. In the winter I get a little bit more in the mood for cozy vibes rather than scary vibes, and in the near future I might make a little bit more dream content on these Thursday videos, uh, stuff that's less scary. It will still be dark though, I think that's an important theme for the channel, but maybe something like dark ASMR or maybe cozy dark type stories, sort of like Gothic Castle that I wrote a number of years ago. I think most of my subscribers currently come for Nightmare Theater anyway, so I don't think that these scary videos will be missed too much, but of course I'm not stopping the scary videos forever. My channel is still in its infancy, I want to stick with it for many years, and I kind of am still settling into my niche as it were. I know that I want it to be dark and cozy. Those are the main things that are going to stick with it, you know, throughout time. So if you like dark and cozy, stick around for next Thursday's video, and also tune in on Sunday night at 9pm Eastern Standard Time for Nightmare Theater, an open book club for nightmares. Until next time, embrace the beautiful dark.